For this lab, we're in the remote desktop for our school, and we are going to be using Cordis Prime by Intel. So if we just type in Quart, Cordis Prime will come up and we can click on it. It takes a second to load, so it might take some time, especially the remote desktops being so slow. Once it loads, these options should come up. We're gonna click Run the Cordis Prime software, then we'll click OK. From here, we can go ahead and full screen it, and then we're gonna want to make a new project so we'll just click new project wizard. From here, this menu will come up. We're just going to press next, and then we want to find where we're going to save it. So we can click these three dots right here, and then it'll take us into our file explorer, and then we can go about finding a nice location for it. I've just made a new folder in my computer engineering uh, folder, and I'm just going to call it nine, and we'll select this folder. And so this will be our save spot. Now, we're just going to name our project, and the name of our project is actually really important. It's going to be the name that we're going to have to use through all the different files in here. So whatever we choose is really going to be the dictator of all the files that we make after this. So I'm just going to title this project X or gates, and that's because we're making a exclusive or gate. And then I'm just going to press next. And then we're going to go with empty project, so press next. And then we don't want to add any files, so we're just going to press next here. Inside of here, inside of this family tab, we're going to click it. We're going to click Cyclone 4E, so we'll click this. Now, we need a name filter, and this was given to us. It's a specific filter. Ours is this code right here, and it can be found in the lab manual. But then we would just click here. We want to make sure the specified device selected is in the available list and then we'll click next and then from here in simulation we want to change this to model sim and then we want to make sure verlog hdl is clicked then we would click next and then once it comes up to the summary we're okay to hit finish and now our quarters prime will load our project now once the project is loaded what we're going to want to do is we're going to click this um, paper right here. Then we're gonna click Verlog HDL file for all of the files that we want to make. And then once that's selected, we'll press OK. And so now we're going to be in here. On the screen, I've included a diagram for an exclusive OR circuit. And this is what we're going to code in Verlog. So this is our Verlog code right here. We're gonna start off our code writing module, and then we want the name of this. Now, the name is going to be the same name as we have over here and it's going to be the same name when we save this, when we run it. So we'll have model, we'll have X or gate, and then we are going to have our two inputs first, and then our output. So we can see from here that our two original inputs are X and Y, so we're just going to have X comma Y, and then our output is F, so we'll just have this as F. And lowercase, uppercase, uh, it doesn't matter too much, but it seems like it wants it uppercase here. So we just have to stay consistent. That's the only key. So we'll have our F or X, Y, and F. And like other programming languages, we're going to have to close this off with a semicolon. So that ends our line. We're going to come down to this next one. And then we need to write out our inputs. We need to specify them in here. We're going to have input X, comma, Y, and this will write our inputs. And then we are going to have output, and then we'll have output F. Next, we need to specify our wires, now that we've done our input and our output. So we will have wire, X, Y, and F. And so these are the wires that are going in. This is X and Y going in, and the wires going out, which is the F. We can see that there's a red wire over there, and there's a red wire for X and Y. Now, we need wires for our NAND gates. We can see that we have four NAND gates, actually. We have four NAND gates, but we have three that are going to be really affecting our final NAND gate. So what we're going to have is wire. I'm going to call the middle NAND gate NAND XY. And the reasoning behind this is because X and Y are both contributing to it. So it's just an easy name to remember it by. We'll call this NAND XY. We are also going to, I'll just call this NAND X. And this is the NAND that's closest to the X. 
and then NAND Y, and this is the NAND that is closer to the Y, so the NAND on the bottom. Now that we have our wires done, we can start wiring things up. So the way that I'm gonna code this is starting from the output. We look at our output, what kind of gate is it? It's a NAND gate. So we're gonna write out NAND, and then we need to call it something. So what we have here is just what type it is. And the one of the reasons why we can just call our project XOR is because there's actually an XOR gate. So that's why we had to make an XOR. Now we've specified the type as NAND, so we need to give it a name. Since it's output, I'll just call it NAND output, and that way it'll be easy for us to remember it by. And then inside of here, we're going to have the output and then the inputs. So we have F, we have NAND X, this is what's coming from on top, and then we have NAND Y. And then we can close this off. And so what this is saying is that we have output right here, this F is our output. We have NAND X, and that is the input from the top, and then we have NAND Y, which is the input from the bottom. Now, I'm actually not gonna add a semicolon there, instead I'm gonna add a comma, and I'm gonna come down to this next line. The reason that I'm adding a comma instead of a semicolon is because we only need to identify this NAND once, and then we can keep making um, more instances of this definition. Or we could end this in a semicolon and then just write out NAND every single time. But this next one is also going to be a NAND. I'm going to call it NX, and this is the code that'll surround the top NAND operator. So inside of here, we know that we have going to an output. Well, our output is going to be the output wire. And our output wire is going to be NAND X. And this is because um, the wire between our X and our Y is this XY. And later in the video, I'll go over it in like a pen and kind of draw out what all this code means specifically. But this NX is making a part of this new NAND gate. And so whenever we have this specifier out here, this kind of variable NAND, we're talking about components. And when we have wires like this, we're only talking about the wires. So it can get a little confusing, but these are wires and these are the gates. So the output of this top NAND gate, this is the top NAND gate, it's going to be the wire that's connected to our output. And so the wire here is going to be our NAND X. The input is X that's coming from the top input. And then the bottom input, we're getting it from our NAND XY. And so this is our NAND NX. Now we're going to need another one, and this is going to be for our bottom NAND gate. I'm going to make it for the bottom one. And so in here, we'll just call this NY. Remember, this is just some arbitrary name. And then inside of here, we need the actual output wire. So the output is gonna be going to NAND Y, that's the wire. And then its input is going to be NAND XY, and then also Y. And again, we're gonna go over all the wiring and the NANDs at the end. So if you know how to do it, you don't need to sit through that. But we do need a comma right here, and we do need a comma right here, because we also have to define the NAND that's in the middle. We're going to call this, and we'll call it NXY, and then inside of here, we are going to look at the output. The output wires that it's going to is our NAND XY. Our inputs are just X, and Y. And so that's going to end that. We've finished our code so we can come down here and now all we need to do is label an end module and then we can attempt to run this. So we're going to come up to this start compilation and then we're going to click it. It's going to say that it's been modified. Do you want to save it? We would click yes and then it would bring us to our file folder right here. We want to make sure it's the same title right here as it is right here and as we've titled it behind the module so we'll click save and then it will save it and now it's going to run these tasks 
Now we've gotten some errors here, and we can go ahead and look at them. We can see I didn't include a semicolon here, so I would have to come in here and fix that. And we have some more errors, and that's because I did not capitalize these. So these inputs and these outputs were never initialized because they were all lowercase and we have them as capital up here. So we're going to have to change all of these to be capital and that's super important because we never initialized the lowercase uh, we only initialize the uppercase up here so now we've fixed those errors oh these should also be fixed because these are going to be based off of our initialized um, variables right here x y and f so now with all those fixed we can try running it again and click yes now after it's run, we've passed all of these uh, things. We don't have any errors. If we did, we can see it by clicking this X right here and then unclicking it. Uh, we've done this fully. And so our XOR gate code has worked. Now, all we need is a test bench code. So for the test bench, we're going to make a new file up here. We're going to click Verlog HDL file, click OK, and it's going to make a new Verlog file. Now. We were given this code, but we can also just type it out in here. What we were given is it going to be a little bit different because of naming conflicts. But inside of here, what we're going to need is a module, just like our XOR gate that we coded right here. And then inside of here, we are going to need the name. It's going to be the same name, so XOR gate underscore. And then instead of having it XOR gate, is going to be TB for test bench, and then two parentheses, and then an ending semicolon. And then underneath here, we're going to need reg, and this reg is for our inputs. So let's go back and look at this. We only have two inputs, X and Y. So we're going to have X comma Y, and then we're going to have a semicolon, and we can just put inputs here. Next, we need our outputs. So we have wire, and our output, we only have one, it's F, so we're going to have F, and we can just comment this as outputs. Now we are going to actually write the XOR gate. So we have XOR gate, and then we have UUT. And then inside of here, we have dot X, uppercase, parenthesis, parenthesis X. We'll have a comma. And then we are going to have a dot Y, parenthesis, Y, parenthesis, comma. And then a dot will have F, parenthesis, F. And so this is going to be the code. And then we'll end this with a semicolon um, once we've closed off our parenthesis right here. And so that's that line, line six. And now we need to write our initial. This is in lowercase, so we'll have initial begin. And then we're going to come down on the next line. And then inside of here, we are going to have our inputs. So x comma y, and then we are going to set this equal to the different lines, the indexes. So we have zero, and then we're going to have the pound 10, and then we are going to have a semicolon to end this line. Now this is gonna get pretty repetitive, so we can just copy and paste this here, here, and here. We're gonna do this four times because there's four possible outputs if we have two inputs. We just need to change this index to 1, this to 2, and that to 3. So we have 0, 1, 2, and 3. And these all have semicolons after it right here, we can see. And then also after this 10 right here. Once we're done with that, we can come down here. We'll do the dollar sign, finish. And then we will end this line. We'll come down here. We'll do end. And then lastly, end module. And from here, uh, everything looks good and we can just click run because we need to start the compilation for this as well. We're going to click yes, and then we're going to rename this as XOR gate or whatever name that is yours, underscore TB, and then no parentheses actually. So we're just going to have it like, like that, and then we'll click save. And now it's going to run the tasks again for this part. Okay, so we got some errors. Um, we can come back here and we will look at all of them. So we have a uh, pretty cool, it tells us where the, what the errors are. And that's because 
I guess I have trouble capitalizing. We can see that all of these were initialized and capitalized, and again, I forgot to capitalize these. So we're going to change these from lowercase to capitalized, and that's not too hard. We can just copy that and paste it in here, in for here, in for here as well, and then we can click run again. We'll click yes to save those changes, and then it's going to start the tasks all over again. And also, I did not spell initial right. It should be I-N-I-T-I-A-L, and we can see that it highlights blue for it to be proper for it to begin. We'll click yes, and then run it again. It's just reminding me how many mistakes I've made. And so we've completed all of our tests. Everything works finally. I no longer have any grammatical errors in the code. Now, from here, we're gonna go back to our XOR gate right here. We're then going to click tools up here. We're going to click run simulation tool, and then we're gonna click RTL simulation. Once we do this, it should pop up and give us a successful message. And it says that it can't read our database file, but it should be okay. We'll come into our model sim right here. We'll full screen this. And from here, we have our objects and processes active. We're gonna to need to come up to view. We're going to click it. And then we're gonna come all the way down to wave right here. And then we want to select wave. And then this wave form will pop up. If we click work right here, plus, we can see that only the XOR gate is in here. We don't want just the XOR gate. We're gonna to have to come up to compile, click compile. And then we're going to need to go up one level. We'll do this right here. And then it seems like we need to go up another level, so we'll click this. And then we need to click our test bench file. And for good measure, we can click the XOR gate and click compile. We have zero errors, zero warnings. And then our XOR gate will compile. Zero errors, zero warnings. And then it also pops up in our workbench. So we'll just click done here. And then we're going to click simulate up here. And then we will click start simulation. We're going to click work and we want to select our test bench file. So we'll click test bench, and then we'll click OK. And from here, we have our X, Y, and F that pop up. These are our inputs, and these are our outputs. And so we can hold control down or command, and then select all of these, and then we can just drag them over and place them right here. They will come in like this, and then we're going to go up next to this 100 PS, where we have this run right here and then we're going to click run. We don't want to finish, so we're just going to click no so that we can still view it. We can click no, and then it will take us to this. All we gotta do, and we can see that it's stuck on finish. It's not gonna finish quite yet, so we can observe it. We're gonna just come back to our wave. We'll click wave down here, and then we'll right click on the screen in our wave. We'll click zoom full, and then we can see our output right here. Now we can adjust this yellow bar to change the inputs and outputs. For an XOR gate, when we have zero, zero, our output is zero. When we have zero, one, our output is one. And then when we have one, zero, our output is one. And then when we have one, one, our output is zero. So we have successfully coded and displayed an OR gate in our wave. When these are low, we can see that these are zero, zero. They're on this lower level. And then we can see that if we move this over, our second input becomes one when this is slightly higher. And then the same thing over here, we can see that it dips down and so it becomes zero again, but the top one goes up, so it becomes one. And then um, we can see the same thing is true for our output. And so that is how you would do lab nine coding in Verlog and then simulating an XOR gate. In our lab, we have these um, inputs. These were the inputs that I'm talking about when we do our truth table. And then this is our output. So they're inputting into our output. So that's what we would make a truth table for. And now we're going to actually explain this code. So in the first line, we are just initializing these things. We're initializing the X or now we are going to also write it in here as our input and our output. So that part's pretty self-explanatory. That's something you just have to do. And then from here, 
we are declaring our wires. So X, Y, and F are our wires. And when we make X, Y, and F, we're creating this wire right here. We're creating this wire right here because we, it's a part of X. We're also creating this Y wire and this Y wire. And lastly, we have F. So it will be this wire right here. Next, we have these wires. And so we have NAND XY, NAND X, NAND Y that we made. And so our NAND XY is from this. This is NAND XY. And this is just NAND X. And this is our NAND Y. And so we said that the wires coming out of here is going to be our NAND XY. So we've made this wire. And then um, we've also made our NAND X. And our NAND X is going to be this wire. And then we've made our NAND Y, and it's coming from NAND Y, which is why I enabled it NAND Y, and it's going into our output. So we have these wires all covered now. So we don't need to make any more wires. And we can go into the actual coding part. So we have this NAND output. We have F and NAND Y and NAND X and NAND Y. So we know that the first thing right here, the first right here, uh, the first right here and first right here, and even the first right here, are all our output. So that's our output. So we can see when we are doing the NAND output, and again, this is just some arbitrary name. We're just calling it NAND output because it is close to what it actually is. It describes it. So we have our F here, and then we have our inputs. We know we declared our NAND X and NAND Y here. So we're going to use those as our inputs. We have NAND X coming in here, we have NAND Y going in here. And then we'll just do one more because it's the same for each of them. So we have this NAND X, that's going to be this top one right here. And we can see that, uh, I should not have erased that, but putting it back here, we have our output, which is NAND X. Well, NAND X is this wire, so that's okay. And then we have our two inputs, which are this X and this NAND XY going in here. And then we have the same thing for like, let's just skip to the NXY, which we made. We have our output, which is the NAND XY. It's this wire and this wire. And then we have our inputs, which are X and Y. So we have input here and then hit input here. And that's explaining the actual methodology behind this code.